Come on, little brother Benny. My little brother Anthony. I, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, what's this brother's attire? What's going on here? <laughs> and you know, you know, he's got the American duster. Mm -hmm. He's got that Iranian scarf. You know, Persian, you know, Persian mm -hmm. scarf. You know, he's, he's got the Mexican, you know, poncho. Mm -hmm. He's got the, oh, wait a second, hold on. Well, see, let, first of all, let me, let me just say something. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was trained as a, what, trained as a, uh, and, 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 and from a very, well, from, I was a part of the, um, the intermediate class of the Negro Ensemble Company that started in 1967, fall of, 19, well, November, whatever, fall of 1967. And, uh, you know, our first teacher was Michael Schultz. Who's a, Big time director in Hollywood, you know, pioneer and black director in Hollywood right now. And then he went, well, he left to go to Hollywood. <laughs> and um, then we had uh, this guy, Luther James, who was a TV director. Then we got this cat, uh, Buddy Butler, who was the best. Um, I think the last I heard, Buddy was teaching someplace out in the Midwest in the States, you know. And then we got Edmund Cambridge as our teacher. He's a bad dude, Ed Cambridge, man. In fact, let me let me just say this. All you, all you, just a second, brother. I gotta talk to some other cast here. All you big time Hollywood actors, you know, that's been trained by Ed Cambridge, the late great Edmund Cambridge, you know, peace and blessings upon his eternal soul. You owe it to the intermediate class of the Negro Ensemble Company for giving you Ed Cambridge because he was he started teaching with us. So you know, I'll wait for your thanks. Well, I'm Kalakile. Anyway, one of the things that Ed, you know, he's just a great teacher, that's all I can tell you. And, uh, you know, I left in 1970 because I had, well, I went to the Air Force, but that's not the point. But he, his acting, his acting, I mean, he just taught us everything. All those, you know, the Stanislav mes method, the, 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 you know, the method acting, all that kind of stuff, you know, all the, all the stuff, art, art, so I mean, all the kind of stuff, you know. And uh, the reason I'm this way is because I gotta do a film tonight. Well, a film. I gotta be in a film tonight. Some kids, you know, they're filming and they, they want me to do this thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I got some film chops. Even South Africa, I got some film chops. You know, I just was told. You know, I did this um, thing called uh, "In Search of a South African uh, Husband." There's a little film that was done. I never saw it, but I saw somebody the other day who saw it. They said, "They said you were good in it." You know, I said, "Oh." I never saw it. <laughs> so maybe one of these days I'll see that. But that's not the point. I don't want to digress. So these, this, this cat, they want me to do this film tonight. And I got to play a ghost, you know. So now I'm thinking, because, you know, of course, I'm going back to my Ed Cambridge training kind of thing, right? You know, and so it's a ghost at night. So I'm going to have to have these kind of things, you know, things like that. And actually, now since it's a film, and these are young filmmakers, I figured that they might... You know, they might not, you know, be hip. Not hip, but I mean, you know, they might have some, some technical problems. So I can't wear glasses like this because they reflect, you know, so I got to change. I got to wear it. I got to wear something like this, you see. So, but the point is, I'm a brown ghost. Because, you know, the, the regular, you know, when you think of stuff, when you see a ghost, it's a spirit. And it's always like white, you know what I mean? And so I'm going like, I'm in Africa. I'm be brown, you know. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, I bring this up. Only because, you know, we learned a lot from Ed, but I'm sure that Ed learned a lot from us. And he took that, that what he learned to Hollywood and trained all this other generation of, of uh, maybe two generations of, of Hollywood actors, you see. And, uh, and that's how it is, you know, you, 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 you build, but I think what happens was the problem, not the problem, but the situation these days, is that we really don't listen to our, our young people. You know, we, we make like, we say lip service or when we listen to them or we or give them advice, like, you know, we know everything, you know. But, you know, as you know, teaching, well, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a two-way thing. Every teacher will tell you they learn, da, 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 da. And so, you know, I'm learning a lot from these kids, you know, and I'm sure they, you know, they're picking some stuff up, up from me. But what concerns me is that when you have the, the big people in charge and they're going to do something for the youth, <laughs> And they ask the youth, but we got such an echo chamber, you're going to get the same answers all the time, you know? So I'm thinking, now what, you know, they, they, right down in South Africa, they want to give the youth money, you know? They want to give them money. 
And I'm going, no. What you need to do is all over, like the, the Satic nations, all over the Southern African region, just have free Wi-Fi. Just have free Wi-Fi from, 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 from Madagascar all the way over DRC, all the Satic nations. Just all the 15 Satic, that whole Southern Africa, free Wi-Fi for every, every, everybody. You know, you when so when the tourists come say, hey, free Wi-Fi, let me get down that, that area. You know what I mean? But the point is, then the youth can figure out for themselves. I mean, there was this thing, I heard this TED lecture, you know, because I, I don't watch, a, well, I watch news, but I mean, I don't like to hear that gory stuff, so every once in a while I have to put on a TED lecture to, you know, to make me feel better. Sometimes they don't make you feel better, but this one, they did this experiment in India where they put, like, a, 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 into a, a computer on this thing, and all the street kids start working with it, and then right away, they knew what to do. So I'm saying, if you want economic development or jobs for you, just give them free Wi-Fi. They'll find their own devices, but whatever they do, and they will figure out a way to make to rise. Youth rise. I mean, I think it's simple. But the problem is, you know, old people don't really want to listen to the youth, and they certainly have no no examples. You know, you they say we got a reading thing, and it's, well, if you want to. If you want your youth to read, then the adults, everybody should have a book. You stand on them long cues, you should be reading. Then the children see you reading and say, hey, maybe I should read. You know? And vice versa, if you're drinking all the time, people say, hey, maybe I should drink. <laughs> That's what kids are thinking. And then you got a television commercial, like, and then at the end they say, oh, no, uh, you know, if you're not 18, this is not for you. And then so kids going like, hey, when I get 18, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and this is not rocket science, you know? So anyway, I'm, <laughs> look, like I said, I, I could be wrong because I'm just an audio dramatist, you know. Just you know, I, I got to do stuff and stuff like that. So I, I could be wrong, but but, but anyway, this this is one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus. Uh, that would be me, T, from the Pattersons taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs>